أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حقا تقاته ولا تأمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah, once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the health and guidance of coming out and offering our Jummah Salah. Praise be to Allah who has created man from water. Then he established relationships of lineage and marriage, for he has power over all things. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who created mankind from a single person and created of like nature his mate. And from them both spread countless men and women. Praise be to him, the one who begets none and was begotten by none. And there has never been anyone who equal to him. For him is all praise. He is the great bestower and the originator of the heavens and the earth. Of everything, he has created peers. He is the most worthy of devotion. He is the most compassionate of those who are masters the most gracious or the most generous of those who are asked for help and the most bounteous of those who give. I bear witness that Muhammad, upon whom be peace, is his servant and messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who affirmed the faith in Allah and his book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon him the best of his mercy and give him eminence over all people on the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, my dear respected Allahs, my dear brothers and sisters, for today's goodbye I have chosen a very simple topic, more or less a reminder for each and every one of us, and that is du'a an essential ingredient. Make doa for yourself and others, or let others make a doa for you. Consider this hadith of the Prophet wasallam. said, whenever you make a supplication for another believer and he is not present, an angel will say, and the same to you. My dear brothers and sisters, Trials, tribulations, and challenges are part of every person's life. However, to counter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us a very powerful tool. And that tool is of dua, or asking Allah for help and his mercy when we need it. And we need it all the time. Equally important, we forget at times that Almighty Allah has also provided us the opportunity to dramatically increase the effectiveness of our own doors by encouraging us to make dua for other brothers and sisters in Islam.
Our Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, the supplication that gets the quickest answer is the one made by one Muslim for another in his absence. My dear brothers and sisters, imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua of even one person who has made that dua for you, your wishes can be granted. One of the dua that has highly or higher chances of being is the dua of a Muslim for his brother without the latter's knowledge. Think of the many people who can make dua for you and the many angels dua you can get by making dua for others. The more people make dua for you, the more the chances of your dua being accepted. You should make dua for others as well. You will not only increase the chances of your dua being heard, but you will also have angels making a dua for you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم and your Lord said invoke me that is believe in my oneness and ask me for anything I will respond to your supplication or invocation chapter 40 ayah 60 The Holy Prophet وسلم, has said in a hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah Make dua and be assured of being answered and know that Allah Almighty does not answer a dua from a careless heart which is not concentrated. It is mustahab for you to ask Allah for what you need by name using whatever simple words and phrases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables you to see. My dear brothers and sisters, it is very important that you not just rely on others to make dua for you. You must always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yourself and ask him directly when praying and at other times prescribed in the sunnah. The Holy Prophet state, the slave will receive a recompense so long as his door does not involve sins or severing of family ties, and so long as he is not hasty. It was said, what does being hasty mean? He said, when he says, I make dua and I make dua, and I have not seen any response. And he gets frustrated and stops making dua. It is narrated by Fudala ibn Ubay said, the Holy Prophet wasallam heard a man making dua after his prayer. But he did not send blessings upon the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet wasallam said, this man is in a hurry. Then he called him and said to him, or someone else, when any one of you has finished praying and makes dua, let him start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then let him send blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then after that, let him ask for whatever he wants. Brothers and sisters, the supplication that gets the quickest answer is the one made by one Muslim for another in his absence. The Prophet wasallam again said, Every dua is kept back until you send blessings upon the Prophet wasallam. Prophet wasallam said, Whoever does not ask of Allah, he becomes angry with him. This knowledge, can be, this knowledge can help you to make the necessary changes in how you make dua today. 
to increase the chances of your doors being accepted. One, prayer is not a spear wheel that you pull out when in trouble, but it is a steering wheel that directs the right path throughout. My dear brothers and sisters, do you know why a car windshield is so large and the rearview mirror is small? Because our past is not as important as our future. So look ahead and move on. And thirdly, friendship is like a book. It takes few seconds to burn, but it takes years to write. And fourthly, all things in life are temporary. If going well, enjoy it. They will not last forever. If going wrong, don't worry. They can't last long either. Fifth, old friends are like gold. New friends are like diamonds. If you get a diamond, don't forget the gold. Because to hold a diamond, you always need a base of gold. Sixthly, often we lose hope and think this is the end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiles from above and says, Relax, sweetheart. It's just a bend, not the end. And seven, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solves your problems, you have faith in his abilities. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not solve your problems, he has faith in your abilities. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again reminds us in the Holy Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعَوَةَ دَائِي إِذَا دَعَانِي فَلْيَسْتَجِبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَأَلَّكُمْ يَرُجْشُدُونَ The meaning of which, when my servants ask you concerning me, Tell them I am indeed close to him, or close to them. I listen to the prayer of every supplicant when he calls on me. Chapter 2, Ayah 186. My dear brothers and sisters, the place of dua is so high to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Nothing is more honorable to Allah, the most high, than du'a. He also said the most excellent worship is du'a. And in order to warn those who are arrogant or careless in making du'a, the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam said the most incapable person is the one who does not make du'a and the most miserly person is the one who does not send salam. And further he said if one does not ask Almighty Allah, and he will get angry with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get angry with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the glorious and the mighty, the answerer of every person in need and every person with a request. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of all wants, and he is answerable to none. We have no other God but him, whilst he has many servants other than us. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again in Quran, A'udhu billahi mina shaytanir rajeeb Ya ayyuhan nasu antumul fuqara'u O mankind, it is you who stand in need of Allah. But Allah is rich, free of all wants and needs, worthy of all praise. Quran chapter 35, ayah 15. My dear brothers and sisters, so to fulfill 
our needs and wants, we must call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making dua to him is a recognition of our weakness and his greatness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ask Allah for everything, even the lace of your shoe. If Allah does not provide, it will never be available. Alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us know how to make dua. We have this tool, we have this tool of dua to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for our sins and our shortcomings. Anything we want, we raise our hands in dua after prayer, or it could be before prayer, or whenever, and raise our hands and make dua, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy and for his forgiveness. This is the time. We are in a time now where this dua is necessary. We know all over the world, all over this universe, there is trials and tribulations. There is so many problems around. Let us all try and make dua, not only for us, for all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this dunya in which we live, and for the hereafter to come. The Prophet sallallahu wasallam used to make a very frequent dua, and that is, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azabna. O oh Allah, give us good in this world and in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters, there are so many dua in the Quran. Let us read the Quran. We have the Quran with us. Let us read it. Let us all try and put this practice, this tool that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us. You know, there are so many things, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to give. You know, it is said more or less that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down in the lowest heaven. He, lowest heaven before dawn. Right? And he's asking, who is there seeking my forgiveness? Who is there asking for forgiveness and asking for his mercy? That time, what happened? Many of us are asleep. That's the best time of the night to sleep in the morning. Let us all try, wake up a little early. And that sixth prayer, that tahajjud prayer, two raka, four raka, or whatever you could get up and pray, and raise your hands and make, make dua for, you know, for yourself, for your family, and for mankind, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right way. May he open for us the gates of his mercy. May he make good for us our religion, wherewith we are guided. This world wherein we live, and the hereafter where to is our return. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بآيات الذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جوار كريم مالك بر الحمد لله الحمد لله نفمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي الله ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد 
biadadi man salla wa sallam Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin biadadi man qada wa qam wa salli ala jami'il anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala kulli malaikatil muqarrabin wa ala ibadillahi salihin birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin ibadallah inna allaha ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanha anil fahsya'i wal munkar wal baq ya izukum la'allakum tazakkarun wala zikrullah ta'ala awla wa awla wa a'azzu wa ajallu wa atammu wa ahammu wa akbar hakim